that I do, Liam, is I turn up. It was one of the criticisms I had of the four or five memberships I was a member of before I created my membership is that someone would found it, set up some stuff, and then they'd be off to the next thing. And the members are there talking to themselves or there's a course there that's not supported and you don't see the founder anymore. And I turn up and I've turned up consistently pretty much every day for as long as I've had a, a membership forum. And it's been a good formula because no one else does it. So everyone notices it. And, uh, and the, you know, you can extend on that, not just turning up virtually, but I turn up to actual physical local meetups all around the world, which is great because I get to travel to other countries and I've got a, a proper business reason to do that. Um, but once you connect with people face to face, it really takes that relationship to another level. I, I've met you several times in person. Um, once we went surfing out there and uh, also saw you in, at a local meetup. And that really takes things to the next level. Someone's less likely to leave when they have that sort of connection. Yeah, I, th I think it, you know, it makes sense, right? Like um, showing up, turning up, a lot of the time that people are signing up for your membership, they want access to you as well. And I think maybe, you know, well, I'd like to hear from you maybe. Why do you think, you know, you said earlier that maybe you're one of the only ones doing it. Why aren't others? A lot of them have um, a different way of thinking about their business. Um, it can be as bad as they have a tax payment due or a mortgage payment due and then they need to sell something. So they start with their own needs first. Then they think, what can I sell? And I've actually seen them sitting around talking about this. Uh, you know, what could I sell? What are people going to buy? And, and then they put something out there. And then next thought is, how can I have no commitment to this? How can I get out of it and onto the next thing? And, and I, it's all backwards as far as I'm concerned. I like to think about solving a problem for a customer and then making that solution useful for the customer. And then how can I continue to serve that customer forever, like a lifetime situation, if they're the right customer. And I guess some of this stems from things that I might have read uh, from Jay Abraham about the strategy of preeminence, um, about having a duty of care to your clients and, and serving them, and then working in companies like Mercedes-Benz where I could see someone might start with a C-class and as their business and their life evolves, they might move up to an E-class and then maybe an SL or an AMG. Like you can stick with the customer and uh, keep serving them for a long time. I think there's maybe, you know, the, the rumor or the, the theory going around that, you know, you can start a business online and it'll just make you passive income. Whereas, you know, it's, it's not true. If you want to, if you want to build a business, you know, as you know, you've done successfully with, with yours and, and it's working, um, you need to yeah, turn up uh, and be committed to it. Um, and there aren't a lot of, you know, memberships or people that are doing this. And I think that there are some people who just turn up and think that, okay, I can do this for a few times and then leave and it'll just run itself. But uh, if we really want to make this successful and get that engagement going and, and make that membership feel like a community, uh, you know, how should we do this? Where, where should we be focusing? Well, if you could look for some metaphors, like if you were going to build a building, for example, uh, and then make an income from it by renting out the office space. There's different skill sets involved to start with. Like the first thing is you've got to try and find the right build, you know, space to build the building. Then you have to map it all out and get all the right components and approvals and build it. And then uh, if you can build it, then you've got to go about being competitive and leasing the office space and then and getting in tenants and looking after their needs. There's a few different skill sets involved in that. And I think a lot of people get excited about building the thing, but they don't know how to maintain it. Or maybe they're good at maintaining things, but they don't know how to build it. So I think uh, a membership, it seems like a very simple idea. Certainly the passive income one is very funny because the, the biggest advocates, like the people who put that in their domain URLs, are the first people to tell you how unpassive passive income is to set up in the first place. Now, cash sitting in my bank account earning interest at a couple of percent, that's passive income. I'm doing nothing with that, right? Um, 
I like to think of a membership as uh, a very leveraged income. It's extremely leveraged and I've got some tools and filters that I use to work out how leveraged that is. And the very best one is the effective hourly rate. And I simply work out what is my monthly profit and how many hours a month do I work? And that formula will reveal your hourly rate. And I'll give you a simple example. If I was uh, making $10,000 a month and I was working uh, 25 hours, then I'm probably making 100 bucks an hour. If I'm doing $100,000 a month in profit, and I'm working 25 hours a month, then I'm making $1,000 an hour. So that's a, that's a guideline to work out uh, if you'd be better off to go and get a job at McDonald's 